Beijing Embraces Classical Fascism. That's the title of an essay by the scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, actually a friend of mine. His name is Michael Ledeen. And uh, while a lot of people throw the term fascism out pretty lazily, Ledeen is an actual scholar of fascism. He got his PhD by doing his thesis on fascism. I think he studied Italian fascism, but he has a good understanding of what fascism at the core means, what fascism is all about. And he says that when we try to understand China, we today run into a kind of roadblock because we think of China as a, as a communist society. And yet China doesn't show certain features of communism. It has a market system. It has a private sector, a private sector that collaborates with the government, but hasn't been taken over by the government in the way that the private sector was kind of gobbled up under the Bolshevik regime in the Soviet Union. And um, Ledeen goes on to say that a better way to understand China is not as a communist society, but a fascist society. And I think Ledeen knows as well as I do, and I've emphasized this in my own work, that fascism and communism are two different uh, versions of socialism. They're both inside of the socialist camp, just like the Shia and the Sunni are both inside the Islamic camp. They're two different faces or different versions of Islam. And the defining feature of fascism is a collaboration between the government and the private sector. And this really is what China has transformed itself into, argues Mike Ledeen. So China started out as a communist society. And it was a communist society under Mao Zedong. And Mao had his cultural revolution and the great leap forward and really hundreds of thousands, if not millions, well, really millions of people were relocated, displaced, tortured, killed. So communism was as big a failure in China as communism was in the Soviet Union. In fact, in some ways, even worse, because the disaster occurred over a shorter period of time. But when the Soviet Union imploded, it became something else. It became a kind of, you could almost call it a gangster or capitalist system with guys like thugs like Putin in charge. So uh, many of them, by the way, themselves, former uh, ex-KGB agents or ex-Soviet officials. But says Ladin, that's not what happened in China. China sort of went fascist under... Uh, Deng Chao, um, uh, under Deng, who was the, um, uh, the guy who came in, I think, in the late 1970s through the 1980s. And the, uh, the effect of, of, of Deng or Deng was to modify the old communist system, create a Chinese private sector, but now have a private sector that was under the sway of the government. And that's basically, that's basically fascism. Ladin says that fascism really until now has never been tried. This is kind of a very provocative idea, but uh, Ladin's point is you had fascism in Italy. It started with Mussolini coming to power in 1922, uh, and then of course Hitler coming to power in 1933. But really what happened is in a few years that fascism was in embroiled in a world war that smashed it. So fascism never really had its run. Think of it, communism had its run in the Soviet Union, 70 years. Uh, countries have by and large had a chance to try out political systems, but the fascist system was, probably the word aborted is not right, but it was shut down in its infancy. But says Ladin in China, they now have what you could call mature fascism, which is to say fascism that has had time to develop. If fascism was sort of introduced by Deng in 1978 or the early 80s, we are now 30 years away from that. And the Chinese are not, don't have to be revolutionary fanatics like Mussolini, let's march, or Hitler, let's go invade Poland, let's invade Russia, let's, let's send bombers over to England and so on. The Chinese in a way are more relaxed about it. And by that, I mean more patient. They're building, if you will, a fascism that from their point of view that works. 
Now, none of this is to deny, Ladin wouldn't deny for a moment, that China has all this centralized control, that this is a repressive system. Ladin is quick to admit that Western expectations, that somehow the Chinese would modify, they would become more liberal, they would become more democratic. I think really no one believes that anymore. In fact, we've the evidence of Chinese behavior over the past several decades has shown that they are not becoming more like us. In fact, arguably, this is a topic for another day, we are becoming more like them. So, says Ladin, in trying to understand China, we need to put aside the conventional framework. They're a communist society. We're a free society. Well, we're not so free anymore. And they're not really a communist society, but in Ladin's description, a mature fascist society in the classic meaning of the term. The classic meaning of the term fascism is not about concentration camps. It's about creating, if you will, a collectivist society with the state at the head of it, but privates, the private sector and private individuals doing the bidding of the state. And isn't that, in fact, what we have in China? Debbie and I are on a great health journey, but we still struggle to eat enough fruits, veggies, and fiber. Now, lucky for us, we discovered Balance of Nature. And what better way to get all your fruits and veggies plus fiber than with Balance of Nature? This is Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies. They're made from fresh whole produce. The produce is powdered after an advanced vacuum cold process, which stabilizes the maximum nutrient content. And this is Balance of Nature's fiber and spice, a proprietary blend of fiber and 12 spices for over and digestive health. So like Debbie and I have, start your journey to better health right now. Call 800-246-8751 or you go to balanceofnature.com. You'll get 35% off your first preferred order by using discount code AMERICA. Again, the website is balanceofnature.com or you can call 800-246-8751. Get 35% off your first preferred order by using discount code AMERICA.